Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. James chapter 5 A warning to the rich, especially those of the tribulation. In order to get rich in the tribulation, you've got to receive the mark. Go to now, ye rich men. Now remember when Paul wrote to Timothy about the rich in either first or second Timothy. <clears throat> he was addressing those that were saved. James is a whole different group of rich people. Go ye rich men, weep and howl Ooh, for your miseries that shall come upon you. <clears throat> Doesn't sound good. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. You know, you go in the closet, you pull out, oh, got holes. You know, that fine clothes they wore. Your gold and silver is cankered. It's disgusting. It's grown. It's got growth. It's bad. And the rust of them shall be a witness against you. You stored it up. Jesus mentioned something about rust. Where thieves and rust can corrupt, where moths can eat your eat. Set your treasures in heaven, not your treasures on the earth. <clears throat> And shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped your treasures together for the last days. That's the clue. The last days. <clears throat> oh, what shall I do? I got all this riches. i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to tear down all my barns. I'm going to rebuild. And God says, thou fool. Thy soul tonight will be fired. These last days are coming to the end of the tribulation. Behold, the hire the laborers who have reaped down your fields. They, you know, they, they took care of your fields. Story of Ruth. The reapers went out. Ruth and those that are poor, the widows, went after them. There were people that worked for you. Which is of you kept back by fraud? Uh-oh. He's frauding his employees. Crieth. And the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabbath. So in the tribulation, <clears throat> people are not going to get their fair wages as they do today. We are setting the grounds for the Antichrist in the tribulation period. If you think that employee relationship with the employer with wage is going to come to everyone who's going to make a fair wage and everyone's going to be happy, you have not read your Bible. Cries of them creeped in the ears, entered in the ears of the Lord of Sabbath. God hears. There's a warning to employers that are church age, Old Testament, tribulation. You better pay your employees fair. Better not swindle them. Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth. This is the rich people. Won't be to those people in Washington, D.C. to have their, their houses and everything paid for them and their children are in private colleges and their children go to the best colleges, they got the best houses, the best tutoring, they got the best clothes. And then you try to tell me how to live and try to tell me how I'm supposed to do with what my money. God will get you. 
I pay my taxes like God tells me to do, and God will get you for what you're doing. If you're in fraud, God hears us. And what man does not complain when he doesn't get his proper wages? What man complains rightfully, rightfully complains when he puts an honest day's work in and he can't pay his bills? Now, I'm not talking about somebody who's out fooling. I'm talking about, man, he's trying to do right. He's living right. He loves the Lord. He's got his, his, his budget set, and he still can't do it. There was a time in America that our my parents could survive with one working and one staying home all day with two or three children. And the businesses would give dog bones to the dog and give lollipops to the children. Now we've gone to a thing today where business takes and steals from the people. We're getting closer to the Antichrist. He had lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. You want more. Remember the lust that we talked about in chapter 4? Ye have nourished your hearts. As in the day of slaughter. You know, you're just getting fat enough. You're going to follow, you know, they, they got that black sheep, that black lamb that they call Judas in the slaughterhouses. They get Judas and he lines the animals up into wherever they slaughter them. But, you know, every turkey is happy in November. Man, he gets the best feed. He gets the best care. He gets it. And then about a week before Thanksgiving, he gets it. Off goes the neck. You just fatten yourself up for the kill. And that expression comes out of the Bible. <clears throat> you have condemned and killed the just. That's definitely in the tribulation. They will turn people in that don't have the mark. When you walk into their store, ah, no mark, no mark, no mark. And he won't say, get out of my store. He'll turn you over to the authorities, as they will today if they catch you shoplifting. There's a store I'm not going to say. Everywhere in that store, they got, they got cameras. And yet, people do steal. One day, those cameras are not going to watch if you're stealing. They're going to watch if you what's on your head or what's on your hand. They're going to be out looking for you. they got cameras everywhere, looking out for those that don't have the mark. You have condemned and killed the just. So there will be just people in the tribulation. I don't mean just people. I mean people who are just, who are right with God. And they won't have the mark. And the rich people are going to turn them over. So where do you think your politicians are going to stand in the tribulation period, my friend? Oh, we're going to vote Democrat. We're going to vote Republican. We're going to vote whatever. And if you decide to live right for God, that person you're going to vote for will turn you in if they want to keep their riches. There'll be a price on your head. All right? And he does not resist you. Be patient. Oh, boy. You mean, well, you read Revelation? Be patient. I'm glad I'm not going to be there. If I wasn't saved by the grace of God and the rapture would happen in my time and I went through the tribulation, I, I just might just go to hell. Praise God, I'm saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. That's an interesting expression in James. coming of the Lord is the second advent of Jesus Christ. Rapture. But what? Let's read on. Behold the husband man. That's the one that works in the fields. Waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth. He goes out. He, he tends plants. Whatever fruit. Tomatoes. And has long patience for it. Until he received the early and latter rain. And that's the Jewish climate. And I apologize, my voice is gone. Friend, the rapture is not dated by the early and latter reign of Israel. If it was, 
we could give you a date. So waiting for the coming of the Lord is the second advent of Jesus Christ. Brethren are Jewish people, the remnant that are in the tribulation period. Scripture with scripture. We'll see in a minute, a couple more verses. Be ye also patient. So you know what it takes to survive the tribulation? Patience. And a road map. You better find yourself a book of Revelation, King James. And wait out the seven years. Patience. I couldn't saw I could not rely on the on the tribulation with patience. Could not do it. To me that'd be a seven year red light. Establish your hearts. See it's still hearts. Even in the tribulation period, it is your heart. For the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. It's coming. You gotta wait for the Lord to come. That's the only hope. Grudge not one against another. Don't complain to every anybody and other, any other people. Stop it. Don't complain. Not in the tribulation period. Brethren. Uh let's see. Let me let me go to a verse over here. Let me let me just pick a Bible verse out of the Bible. Just uh James 1 1. James, a servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ, and the twelve tribes, guess who we're talking about? Jews. Okay? Brethren, least ye be condemned. Now listen, condemned. John 3 says, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I'm glad I didn't preach this morning. I would have lost my voice. And also says, I'll go there and read, so we get it right, John chapter 3, about being condemned. In John chapter 3, and I apologize again for my voice, it says, This is the condemnation, that light has come in the world, and men love darkness rather than light. Because their deeds were evil. Now that's tribulation. You come down to that's the that's the thing of the tribulation. Darkness, Satan, Antichrist, the false prophet. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest their deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light. His deeds may be manifest. But verse 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned. I'm not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he has not believed on the name the only begotten Son of God. Now in the tribulation period. This condemnation. My condemnation end April 25th, 1987. On that afternoon, I received Christ as my Savior, and I'm no more condemned. But in the tribulation period, like the Old Testament under the law, you can lose it. You can get it back, or you may not get it back. You don't know. See, the tribulation period is under law and belief on Jesus. We're not under the law. So, if you gripe to one another, that's condemnation in the tribulation. If I gripe today to someone in church, 1 John 1, 9, I can confess it, and God is able and just to forgive me my sin, without no sacrifice, without doing nothing but pleading the blood of Jesus Christ, if I'm truly repentant of that sin. You do that sin in the tribulation period, it's going to be hard to get to that temple when Satan's sitting there. At least you be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. The Lord's coming. And when he comes, he's coming as a judge. 
for the raiment of Israel, he's going to hell. And those nations that oppress the Jews, he's going to judge. Take my brethren. Take my brethren, brethren, the prophets. Who do the prophets speak to? Israel. Who has spoken in the name of the Lord. For example, a suffering affliction and of patience again. That's a big word in James 5. And we've seen it in Hebrews 11. And we've read it in the Old Testament. Elijah. And he got ran off by one woman. Noah had only his family. Abel was killed for his belief. Behold. We. James and the right. Count them happy which endured. The prophets. You know what Samuel said when he died. When he, of his death. Why would you wake me up? Why would you disturb my sleep? Even though. Christ had not died for his sins yet. That the full payment could not be paid. As far as his dying in God's mercy and grace of the law. Of the law. <coughs> what are you doing waking me up, Saul? Man, I was resting. How many more, how much, you know, how many, how many more years we got that Jesus comes? Then Jesus would release him out of Abraham's bosom. But as far as then, until Jesus came, he was resting. Now they arose from the grave when Christ died. I wonder if Samuel was one of those prophets walking around. Hi, guys. Things have changed since I was around here. Ye have heard uh -oh, of the patience of Job. Forty-two chapters. The book begins with Satan taking everything from Job. Touching his flesh. His wife even becoming an adversary of him. Three friends come and just bang him against the wall. Then the fourth friend comes and helps him out, kind of, best he could. Then the Lord shows up in a whirlwind. And then he gets his family back. And the Bible says something quite interesting in Job 42. And return to captivity. You have heard the patience of Job. That's a big word, patience. Have seen the end of the Lord. You've seen what happened to Job. Job is an example that the Lord is very pitiful and tender mercy. Thank God. But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, by heavens, neither by the earth, mother earth, my lands needed by any other O. All right, neither in the tribulation period, a Jew goes into a courthouse. Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God, he can't take that oath. What do you think the American government is going to do to him under if the American government's around in the tribulation? James says, don't you do any oath. But let your yea be yea, yes. And your nay be nay, no. At least you fall into condemnation again. Condemnation, you take an oath. In other words, you know what James is telling us? In the tribulation, you better keep your words to singular words. Yes? No. Would you like ice cream? Vanilla. What kind of day do you think it is? Clear. Sometimes we need to learn that. Keep our mouths shut. 
in the church age. Jesus said in Matthew, I think it's five. I know it's, it's one of those verses I know it's there. Just forget what chapter. By every idle word, a man shall be judged, and we will be judged by our words. Man, you better shut up in the tribulation period. Especially if someone's listening on you. I just read today that these, these, these Trojan hackers can actually access your computer and get a hold of your microphone and listen to you. We're getting more and more to the tribulation, friends. There'll be no more privacy. That, that will be going out the window. The government will own it all and listen to it all. Fallen condemnation. Is any among you afflicted? Verse number 10. It's the prophets afflicted. Are you afflicted? Among you, Jews. Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Sounds good. If you're in trouble, pray. If you're happy, sing. If you read the book of Revelation, are you really going to be happy? Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. You say, well, there you go. There's the church. Yes. Church is a body of believers. We can follow that for today. And we can fall in the tribulation. You know, you can take those seven churches in the book of Revelation. You can, Yeah, they are our church, period. But you can also fix them down to, to periods in the tribulation as seven churches, seven vials, seven trumpets, seven seals, seven vials. I didn't say that one already. Now, I've had this done once for my wife, Tracy. I walked right up to him. She was... She was the verse that she died one night. They resuscitated her. They they had her on a machine that I was told by a certified nurse that she's not going to live. I went to the pastor and said, you know, hey, this verse right here might take it out of context if I ask you. He says, no, I don't believe. I don't believe you go to your pastor. Say, pastor James five fourteen. We got a serious health thing. I don't think it's out of context. Now, let me ask you this question. Okay, we can do this in the church. This does not defile the scriptures. Well, let me ask you. Let's bring it back to the tribulation period. Let's keep it in context of the tribulation period. You're a Jew. You're sick. The whole world is in utter chaos run by Satan. Satan hates the Jew. What doctor do you think, what hospital do you think you're going to walk in without that mark and going to get care? Really? Do you think Hen's going to come and visit you with his smelly jacket and knock you on the floor? That's why they fall on the floor, you know. I don't think that guy ever washes his jacket. That food with him, I know I'm going to hit the floor. All right. So, yeah, you go to the you go to your church leader and say, listen, and we had the elders, we had the, uh, the church officers there, and they bought oil. And I got to say, my wife's here. She's alive and well. I think it was what? That next night, you, I came in the room and said, hi. I'm like, what? <laughs> Will it always work? Can't say that, can I? Let them pray over him. All right. All right, let's take a church age now. If any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let him pray. That sounds good. Isn't that great? What is the phone number of your preacher that's on the television? How do you get a hold of that radio preacher to come and visit you? I'm going to say something here. I'm going to be very basic about it. I know, I know a preacher who doesn't come and visit people in the hospital. How are you going to get that radio and TV preacher to come in your room and pray over you? Um, when, I was in, when I was in the ledger church I was in, there was a big scandal going on. I forget who it was. You'll know if you hear. You send in money and your prayer card to whoever it was. I forget who it was. Well, they found a big problem. The checks were being cashed. The money was being kept. The money orders were being kept. But they found in the dumpster 
half open envelopes with the prayer information still in them. Just trying to teach you the truth. Just trying to show you there's fraud out there in the church. This is a physical leader of your church comes and lays hands on you for healing for prayer. Anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. Now you say, well, how did it go that night in the hospital? My pastor did not let me in there. You were know, her husband. He, he said the elders of the church, he said, you're not an elder of this church, so you can't go in. I take that, he took that verse very literal, and hey, it worked. But according to the Bible, I don't think it's vegetable oil. I don't think it'd be motor oil. I think it'd be olive oil, type of the Holy Spirit. Now, I know another pastor went around anointing my house with oil, and we ended up starting to see frogs and all kinds of witches and stuff coming at our door. So, I've got all kinds of stories. I should just sit down and just spill them. What after we saw? After that, our house never squeaked. And the prayer of the faith shall save the sick. Uh, what are you going to do with that in the church age? If I pray over someone that is sick, that's going to save them. No. And, <coughs> and the Lord shall raise him up. If that's done in church age, is that always 100%? And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven. You mean by prayer? Your sins are forgiven without the blood of Jesus Christ? That don't sound like the church age to me, and I'm not going to mess with that verse. I just threw some things out there. Oh, we got to run into a passage here. Confess your faults one to another. Now, a particular church has that and my note has it wrong here in my in my Bible see there's a difference let me spell the difference out F A U L T S now warning if your Bible says S I N or S I N S that's not the right Bible I don't confess my sins to anybody but Jesus Christ. Now, if I sinned against you, the Bible says, all right, hey, you know, I lied about you. I, I spoke the words I should I stole something, you know, okay. The false. And then at men's prayer, I will, you know, people, I, I don't pray as much as I'm supposed to pray. Times I, I'll say, you know, I don't put the Lord in my mind as much as I should. We had a man last week say, you know, I don't put the Lord first in my life all the time. And pray for one another. And that's what we do. We, t you know, we got problems in our life. Say, you know, this is our problem. It's not our sin. This is a problem I'm having. I'm coming short. And we pray for them. I've been praying for that gentleman. That we may be healed. Church age would be hell. False. I, I, I just want to. I just want to receive that mark. We're gonna pray for you. I just want to end my life. I'm just sick and tired of this this mess going on all around us. I can't stand it. I don't have the patience. Patience is not a sin. The lack of patience is. It's a fault. Scripture with scripture. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. Notice how that's singular. <laughs> Availeth much. You can find one man who loves the Lord and prays like Anna in the temple. You say, well, how effectual was she? How many of you got to hold Jesus in your arms? 
God really rewarded her, didn't he? Mary, that's a cute baby. Here, hold hold the Jesus. Okay. Hmm? Go back in the Old Testament and see who the prayer warriors are. Look at Hannah. Eliah, I mean, uh, Eli, the priest, thinks she's drunk. Well, I mean, put away you. Man, come on. I, I haven't been drinking. I'm praying to the Lord. And what happened? Her prayer was answered. What was that? Healed. Her womb was healed. She couldn't have a baby. Elias was a man subject like passions as we are. Man, he, he isn't it great in Mount Carmel, man? He had it with, with the prophets of Baal. Wasn't that just great? He killed those 450 prophets and he showed them who God was. And a woman gets up and says, I'm going to kill you by this time tomorrow. <laughs> a man of God had anxiety over a woman. After he just killed 400 men. I mean, God's telling us more than what you know about a prophet, but. Noah. David, Abel, were just men like us. If you hit their thumb with a hammer, they would scream. If they had a thorn in their finger, it would be painful. David cried over a son that destroyed his home. And then went for a walk and destroyed his family. We're all subject to the ruin of Adam. I used to think David was all on top of all, top of all, top of the Bible. Man, anybody can beat up a giant. I always picture him going back to Saul carrying that giant's head. like, And I'm always thinking, how long did he carry that head around? Look, scaring the girls. and, and uh, no. But... Like passion, you know what? What's like passion? He's he was suffering the loss, coveting, fear, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. Uh oh! You remember a time in the tribulation period where there's going to be no rain? You remember the time in the tribulation that the water is going to turn to blood? And the Bible speaks about two prophets coming. Here he is. That latter rain we just read earlier, you're going to need it in tribulation because Elijah's going to show up and say, hey, no rain. How about that, Moses? <laughs> Check that out. Yeah, Elijah's watching. Any water that's left, turn to blood. Whoa. <laughs> and the Bible says that will. I mean, he just imagine Moses and Elijah going around just having fun. So bad they killed them. And then they had a Christmas in honor of their death. So instead of celebrating a birth, they got Easter and Christmas all mixed up. And gave them gifts and, and chocolate bunnies and all that other stuff. That it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. Now what? It, what if you know your Bible, what is that? Here comes the Antichrist. So how do you get uh, Jews in the tribulation? Definitely. <clears throat> now we can apply parts of it spiritually to the church. But. So people will take that verse. Oh, California's got three and a half years of no rain. In the, California's nowhere in the Bible. Yes, as a matter of fact, take that back. Yes, it is. There's one place in the, in the book of Ecclesiastes. I went down in the Garden of Nuts. I got there written California. So guess what's going to happen with Elijah and Ahab? Wait a minute, take it. Hold on, hold on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Who was Ahab's wife? Isn't she in the book of Revelation? There you go. So pretty soon, one day, the Old Testament is going to be current events. And you know what the rabbis are doing today? What is worse going on in the churches today? 
They have changed the Bible, the Torah. That Jew would not recognize. It's going to be hard in the tribulation period because they're not going to recognize it because it's not what they're preaching in the in the synagogues. You're going to have, have 144,000 come around and straighten them out. Because when Jesus came, the Pharisees and Sadducees didn't have an idea what was going on either. We just read again today as a family. Elijah fed a bunch of people. He, he took it. He gave it to his servants. And the servants gave it to the people. Now, if you couldn't find that in the New Testament, it happened twice. twice. No one looked back and said, oh, maybe it. One of them Elijah, Elijah people did this. Yep. I could never get Elijah, Elijah mixed up. That's like the words in the Bible, Saul, Saul. Wait a minute. And he saw, saw, Saul, Saul. So, and he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. That would be the, the seven years, probably. The latter year of the rain. Yeah, bring forth fruit and the only thing I gotta say is Mother Earth, because Mother Earth is old, right? It's not something new. And I'm old enough to, to know that the fact is that I have used outhouses. And when you dig a hole in your mother and you crap on your mother, and then you call her your mother, you a bad boy. And there's other things boys do. And you find in the Bible uh, up against the wall on your mother. And then you drive on your mother. I think Mother, yeah, I think Mother's Earth Day was yesterday. And you put fertilizer on your mother. Cow poop. I guess you can keep on going. Yeah. Alright, brethren. We know who the brethren are. If any of you do err from the truth. And one convert him. You stepped aside from what is true. Someone comes along and said, hey, book, Bible, and chapter, verse. Let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death. And shall hide a multitude of sins. Where is the blood of Jesus Christ? <coughs> Let him know. The convert. The one that converted them. That told him his error of his way. That he which converted the sinner. The one that came to the sinner. Say hey you're doing wrong. From the error of his way. And save a soul from death. Okay. Well, there's only one sin in the tribulation period where it marks your death. It's that mark. And I guarantee there's going to be some people that are going to do their best and darnest to prevent their loved ones from taking that mark. It shall hide a multitude of sins. Now, there's one man in the Old Testament about this. He walked up to the king of Israel and said, Thou art the man. Now, let's take verse 19. Let's say, this church, brethren, Christian, if any of you do err from the truth, and we all do err, and one convert him, I'm not converting you from nothing. This is trying to show you where you're wrong. Let him know, let me know, that he which converts the sinner, I, I told him which way, from the error of his way shall save a soul from death. Well, now, I mean, the wages of sin is death. And shall I hide a multitude of sins. I'm going to leave that verse, this, this verse I'm just going to leave like it is. There are tribulation references. James is written to the 12 tribes scattered aboard. There's only one time in the future that the Jews are going to know who they are. It's when God sets up the 144,000. 
two tribes are missing. And when Jesus Christ comes back and sets up the millennial government, then all 12 tribes are back. And they know who they are, including Dan. And there's things here, yes, a practical application of the Bible is what it says, who it says it to. Jews. Doctrine. Jews. A spiritual application when you play, hey, if you're someone sick in the hospital, try to pastor, try your church people. There's nothing wrong with that. That does not defy the Pauline epistles. That does not defy the scriptures. Then a hysterical, a his, historic, historical is something that has happened in the past. The Old Testament is all history. James is history. He's writing to the Jews of his time. Yet, a lot of that history is prophetic. It's going to happen again. The Bible is written to three classes of people. Jews. Actually, four. Jews, Gentiles, the church, and the lost. You've got to ask yourself when you're reading the Bible, who am I reading about? And you can't take a book like Hebrews and say, oh, church. And you can't take to the 12 tribes scouting a board and say, ooh, church. Now, I can apply it to the church. But, doctrinally, James never went out to the Gentiles. Peter, James, and John, and them in, Ju in Jerusalem stayed in Israel and preached to the Jews. You know the next guy we're going to read about? We're going to read about Peter. Peter is the apostle to the Jews. Yes, he opened the door to the Gentiles, Cornelius, but so did Philip. And Paul tells us that he is the apostle to the Gentiles, even though he loved the Jews. And Peter is the apostle to the Jews. So it's Jewish. I don't know how much it's Jewish. Four chapters in Revelation. Church, church, church. After that, the church is gone. Unless you believe in nonsense that the church will go through it, but that's nonsense. 